motion picture you are now seeing is a photographic record of images of real objects formed by the lens of a camera like this one. All the many varieties of cameras represent one kind of optical instrument. These are familiar examples of other kinds of optical instruments. All these kinds of optical instruments have one thing in common. Each makes use of one or more lenses. And whatever the purpose of the instrument, its lens or lenses have one basic function, the formation of an image. We can use this simple basic camera to demonstrate some preliminary principles by which lenses function. Opposite the lens at the back of the camera is a ground glass. This enables us to see images which would be normally formed on film. For example, we point the camera at an object, an arrow symbol. This arrow can represent any object emitting light or reflecting light. Light from the object enters the camera through its lens, which forms an image, a pattern of the lighted object on the ground glass. Let's see how the image was formed. Our basic camera has two main components which demonstrate image formation. A lens and a screen which receives the image. In this camera, the image may be formed on the ground glass, as we saw, or on the film, which would be in the same position. The word screen can indicate any image receiver. In fact, our simple camera is very similar to the human eye. It too has a lens and a kind of screen called the retina on which visual images are formed. Our camera lens, like that of the eye, is thicker at the center than at the edges and is called a convex lens. This line is called the principal axis of a lens. It passes through the centers of curvature of the lens surfaces. We remember that from any point on an object, waves of light proceed in all directions. In understanding how images are formed, let's select two of the many rays which the lens intercepts. These two lines indicate the portion of the wave front we're interested in. This ray diagram illustrates two light rays coming from a point on the object. One ray passes through the principal axis and is not appreciably refracted. The other ray, passing through the edge of the lens, is refracted most. It intersects the first ray at a point called I prime, where the image is located. The principal focus of this image, called F, is at the intersection of the outer ray and the principal axis. The distance between this principal focus and the center of the lens is the focal length of the lens. Notice that the image formed by this lens is inverted and smaller than our object. Let's see such a lens and the image formation we've been discussing. We have a lighted object, a convex lens, and a screen set in this adjustable optical bench. With the object some distance from the lens, we see the kind of image we'd expect from the diagram we saw, inverted and smaller than the object. We call this kind of image, which we are able to project upon a screen, a real image. Now the object is moved closer to the lens. We see a somewhat larger image as the screen is adjusted for sharp focus. Moving the object still closer, we get a still larger image. When the object is moved closer to the lens than its focal length, we lose the image on the screen. However, if we remove the screen and look through the lens, we do see an image, an image we could not project onto a screen. 
This is a virtual image, upright and magnified. Let's review briefly what we've seen. In the first position, with the object some distance from the lens, the image on the screen was smaller than the object and inverted. In this position, with the object moved closer to the lens, the image was larger, but still a real image and inverted. In this position, and at this particular point only, we lost the image. Notice the rays are parallel. They do not meet to form an image. The image is said to be at infinity. When we moved the object closer to the lens than the focal length, there was no image on the screen. The rays did not converge here, but they do converge here, so that when we looked through the lens, we saw the image, an upright virtual image. This is one common use of a convex lens as a magnifier or reading glass. The image is larger than the object on the table. This kind of lens, a concave lens, forms a virtual image that is smaller than the object. Concave lenses are thinner toward the center than at the edges. Using this kind of lens in the optical bench and moving our object toward the lens, we cannot find a point at which an image is projected upon the screen. However, removing the screen and looking through the lens, we again see an image, upright, but now reduced in size. It is a virtual image. Concave lenses form virtual images. How can we see an image we cannot project onto a screen? As we said, a concave lens forms an upright, reduced, virtual image. But when we see an image through a lens, remember we are actually using two lenses, one man-made lens and the eye lens, a convex lens which forms real images. Tracing the formation of an image of our object through the eye lens, we find that it does form a second real image, inverted, and projected upon the retina, the receiving screen of the eye. To demonstrate what we've just discussed, we'll set up our optical bench with a concave lens. With the lens in place, we see that no image is projected upon the screen. Now we add a convex lens, which resembles the eye lens. The two lenses show us an inverted real image, the kind formed on the retina of the eye. We have formed an image by a combination or system of lenses. To further illustrate the system of lenses, we'll try two convex lenses combined. We'll replace the concave lens with a convex lens. Now, with two convex lenses, the image we obtain is inverted and magnified, a real image. Forms of both the convex and concave lenses are used in eyeglasses to supplement the lens of the eye. In a normal eye, parallel light rays are refracted by the lens to converge or focus exactly on the retina. If the lens is thicker than normal in the center, light rays converge in front of the retina rather than focusing on it. To correct this condition, called nearsightedness, we need eyeglasses using concave lenses. A concave lens will cause light rays to diverge slightly so that they focus farther back on the retina. If the lens is thinner than normal at the center, light rays will strike the retina before they have converged to a point. This condition, called farsightedness, can be corrected with eyeglasses having convex lenses. A convex lens tends to converge light rays so that they focus farther forward on the retina. 
We have at our disposal a wide variety of lenses of differing characteristics for different uses. Lenses differ according to the shapes or curvatures in which they are ground. The greater the curvature of a lens, the shorter focal length it has. Lenses of different focal lengths and curvatures arranged in different lens systems form the specific kinds of images we may desire in an optical instrument. This greatly enlarged image is obtained with an arrangement of a thick lens near the object and a thinner lens farther back. This arrangement is similar to that of a compound microscope. We'll turn the lens system as in a microscope. The short focal length lens gives a real image, enlarged and inverted. The eyepiece lens of the microscope, acting as a common magnifier or reading glass, further magnifies. This enlarged image, which is a virtual image, is many times larger than the object. The compound microscope is one kind of optical instrument that enables us to magnify images of tiny objects, such as these microorganisms, hundreds of times more than actual size. With a similar system of lenses, but now using an objective lens of very long focal length, we have set up a model for an astronomical telescope. As the eyepiece lens is brought into place, we see the image of the distant object. In this telescope arrangement of lenses, the large objective lens forms a real image, this time of a far distant object. The eyepiece lens in front of the eye at the extreme right, acting as a common magnifier, forms a virtual image, a second enlarged image that the eye sees in the telescope. The astronomical telescope is another kind of optical instrument that enables us to see objects the unaided eye cannot see clearly. For instance, the moon and other heavenly bodies are brought closer to us visually by means of lenses. There is much more to the study of lenses, but the principles we've discussed are basic to an understanding of the effect of lenses upon light. Whether we're dealing with single lenses, or with systems of multiple lenses in optical instruments, every lens or lens arrangement, every optical instrument has one purpose, to refract the light emitted by or reflected from some object to form a light pattern of the object, which we call an image.